mode. Good afternoon. This is Steve Witt at Suscutech. Uh, welcome to uh, Suscutech webinar series. Uh, this is part two, SharePoint migration, uh, SharePoint migration primer. Um, Ten things to know before you migrate. Justin, if you could advance the slide. I forgot that you were running it. So just a little bit housekeeping before we get started. Um, this is part two. Um, we did the first part back in December where we talked about some of the business drivers uh, and other considerations you have around licensing uh, if you're looking at moving your SharePoint environment. Um, but if you if you weren't able to attend the first one, um, there's a lot of good information in, in the second one, so you don't necessarily need to have one without the other. Um, we do do a lot of webinars here at Suscutech. Uh, you can find our full schedule on uh, suscutech.com slash webinars. This is where we do our 30 on Thursday series and some other uh, webinars we do a couple a month. And we want your feedback. If there's any topics you'd like to see us cover, please uh, email webinars at suscutech.com. So today's topic, again, is uh, migrating your SharePoint site, 10 things to know before you migrate. Our presenter is Justin Miller, a solution architect here at Suscutech. Uh, I will be moderating. I'm Steve Witt, VP of Product Development and Training here at Suscutech. And I also have on the line Bill Peters uh, from his business development at AIS Network. He also gave the part one of the series. And before we get into Justin's material, I was going to give Bill an opportunity to kind of do a quick recap uh, of part one for those people that weren't able to attend part one. So Bill, if you want to kind of give a quick recap, that'd be great. Sure, great. Thanks, Steve. Uh, so in part one of the webinar series, we discussed many of the business drivers to consider when moving your on-premise SharePoint to the cloud. And I think one of the big takeaways uh, from that webinar is really Microsoft license mobility. So um, many of the, the roadblocks or um, many of the, the items that have made uh, moving your on-premise SharePoint to the cloud a bit difficult, uh, including reinvestment in licensing, and many of those licensing costs have now been eliminated. So uh, you can move the Cal licensing that you currently own through your enterprise agreement uh, to a hosted environment. So definitely keep that uh, you know, in your mind and consider that when moving uh, to 2010. So as Justin speaks, uh, please, please kind of keep that in the back of your mind and remember that you can use the licensing that you currently own. Uh, when you want to migrate from a from an older version of SharePoint to 2010, and this is definitely a good time to consider moving uh, your on-premise SharePoint to the cloud as well. Uh, we can stand up some temporary environments for test and development. Justin will be able to get into those uh, a little bit further down the line in the presentation, uh, but I think that's the one big takeaway that we should consider um, as Justin moves through his presentation. So, um, with that, I'll go ahead and turn it over to Justin. Yeah, and just one more thing, Justin, before we get started. Um, if anybody has a question, please use the um, go to webinar ch uh, question feature, uh, and I will moderate those questions and ask them of, of Justin as he goes or um, save them to the end um, if they're more generalized questions. So, Justin, it's yours. Great. Thank you, Steve and Bill. So, today we're talking about some of the practical um, steps when we're talking about migrating. Uh, either from on-premise to uh, hosting or hosting to hosting and uh, come up with 10 items, 10 steps to think about and to, to help you along that path. And as we go along, um, you'll see uh, have had uh, quite, a, quite a bit of experience over the past year, year and a half of, of uh, doing some uh, migrations and upgrades. And this is uh, kind of an overused um, cliche, but uh, you can never plan too much. Um, the idea to, to plan what you're going to do for your, for your migration, um, to make sure that you're meeting the goals and getting to where you want, and you don't end up with, with a, uh, a bridge um, that doesn't really uh, meet where it's supposed to. So there's um, two basic approaches. There's a phased approach where you're taking your SharePoint site and you're moving bits and pieces of it, whether it's subsites or um, separate site collections um, or even within a subsite of uh, specific lists and, and libraries that are moved over um, ad hoc and moved over kind of one at a time or in smaller groups. 
The, uh, the second approach is an all at once approach where you're taking your entire either farm or web application and, and doing a, a, a one time cutover from the old environment into the new environment. And as, as you go through this planning phase, um, you, you want to think about what the, the different types of processes that you can use, whether it's you, you choose the phased approach or the all-at-once approach. Uh, the three that we have listed here, uh, the database backup and transfer is, is a great uh, tool for the all-at-once, where you're moving the entire content database um, from one from one location, one network, one environment to another. The SharePoint Farm Backup and Restore is, is something that kind of is a, is a hybrid, is a kind of a, a bridge between the two. You can use it for an all-at-once where you're moving everything. And so within SharePoint, within Central Admin, you can back up the entire farm or entire site collection and all the things that go with it and then restore them into the new environment. You can also get down to the site level with the SharePoint Farm Backup. Um, through central admin where you can can kind of granularize what you want to have backed up and and then on the new environment to be able to restore and then also to just to mention some third party tools and, and I'll uh, talk about this as we go through there are a few tools that that I'm familiar with and have used and which allow you to 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 help you with the the phased approach where you can actually uh, move certain subsites of or subsections of, of your site uh, to the new environment. With uh, actually the last two clients that I, I've been working with, we've gone with uh, an all-at-once approach and, and that has been predicated on the fact that they have a public-facing site uh, that's a content management site and the reason we went with an all-at-once approach is to, to minimize the amount of time that they, they would be down or that, that content would have to be um, kind of put in read-only mode, and we'll get into that a little bit later. But we uh, actually have been going through uh, a project just uh, this past uh, two or three months where we're, we're going through that, that all-at-once approach. The second um, kind of check that we want to look at or tips to think about is to, to check your versions. And there's two main areas to look at. The first is um, SQL Server. Uh, SQL Ser or SharePoint 2010 does run in SQL Server 2008 and, and then also in 2008 R2 and those are uh, completely different versions so you have to just be aware of what you're running in your current environment and what you're going to be moving to in your new environment. Uh, we just had an issue just last week where we were uh, backing up a database from a SQL Server 2008 R2 environment, made a backup file, transferred it to the new environment, and then came to realize that uh, they were only running SQL Server 2008 with Service Pack 3. And SQL Server wouldn't allow us to, to restore that, that database, so we had to, to bring up another a server, a 2008 R2 server, so we could restore that database. The, the second uh, area uh, is versions of SharePoint and that includes both service packs and cumulative updates. Uh, if, if you're going with an, an all-at-once approach where you are backing up a content database and then restoring it and attaching it to a new SharePoint farm web application, the versions need to either match or you need to be going to a, a, a higher version. You can't be going backwards in versions. Uh, there will be uh, errors and warnings and it, it, the, the attach and the restore won't succeed. So those are things to just kind of make sure you um, plan for and are prepared for as, as you move from an environment to environment. The next uh, tip is to optimize your new environment before you do any uh, type of migration. And what that includes is making sure you have the latest win Windows updates, um, making sure that everything is, is patched to the current level security-wise. Configure logging. And, and with this point, we're, we're talking about um, specifically for, for SharePoint, SharePoint logging. 
uh, to put it to a separate drive that goes ahead and 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 makes it uh, a good practice so that uh, you're not filling up your your system partition with any logging that is going on. And then the third big point to think about is SQL Server optimizations. Uh, we're talking about TempDB performance, uh, putting that on a separate physical uh, disk, and then also a separate physical disk for data files, log files, backup files, and there's a uh, link at the resources at the end to um, some of the TechNet Microsoft articles for, for best practices for this. But just to remember that you want to get the database uh, configured and optimized, the SharePoint server configured and optimized, everything um, that, it, that is best practice or a better practice than, than out of the box so that as you move and migrate into that new environment, your, your system is, is ready to go. You don't have to go back and, and rework and, and work through a lot of um, possible configurations or, or scripts to, to get to, a, to an optimal performance. So step four or tip four is to run pre-upgrade checks. And these are SharePoint checks. The first is there's actually a pre-upgrade check script for an STS ADM command. And then there is with SharePoint 2010, the test SP content database PowerShell script. And these two um, work uh, pretty much in, in, in conjunction with each other. The pre-upgrade check uh, really focuses in on features and site definitions to make sure that uh, that your uh, migration is going to to be able to to migrate successfully. That the new environment will have will you have all the features and site definitions uh, within the content database and within the the web application. The the test SP content database. Uh, really uh, gets a little bit deeper, and this is um, a new script. The pre-upgrade check was part of 2007 on the service packs. The test SB content database is part of the SharePoint 2010 uh, installation. The big thing for the test uh, database script is it allows you to verify all customizations that are referenced within the content database, including solutions, web parts, uh, templates, you know, other customizations that might be missing in the new environment. And this test uh, script is actually run in the new environment, and it is run. Um, you don't have to have the content database attached to a web application. It can actually just be run straight against a, a database that's running in SQL Server. Also, um, one of the third-party tools. Uh, Excellers DaVinci Migrator um, has has a discover feature that allows you to query for identifying issues and lets you rank them by severity. And here's a screenshot of, of their query tool um, that lets you, with, with close to SQL type of uh, query language, uh, search throughout your current database, your current content for uh, things that may one may need to be cleaned up before you go, or that may be causing problems. It allows you to uh, to prioritize what what issues you need to take care of before you migrate uh, to the new environment. So that's just uh, something to keep in mind. Uh, there's a link to this tool at the end of the the presentation. So step five uh, to clean up. Make sure you clean up your content. Clean up your uh, environment before you, you try to migrate anything out. Uh, the old adage of garbage in, garbage out. If if you leave uh, the garbage in and the uh, the extra uh, content, extra stuff in your old system, if you don't clean up before you move it, it's going to be just one more task, one more thing you have to remember before you move, uh, before you can get it to, to an optimal uh, state. A few other things when we're talking about cleaning up before migrating. Uh, to check in, if you're using the publishing sites, uh, to check in and publish all content. And this is um, very important because more than likely if you're moving from one environment to another, the accounts and the user uh, domain are going to be different. And it is much, much harder to go back in 
and check in and publish content uh, with a new account, new structure, even if you've migrated the users, they're still checked out in the old users. So it is um, a lot easier to remember to do this beforehand. It'll save you a lot of headaches. You want to, and if this, this is again, um, you don't have to do this, but this will affect a couple of different things. But if you remove the version history uh, on on lists and libraries and and documents, this will the one big savings is it'll reduce the content database size. And as you go through version history, as you're saving different versions, SharePoint doesn't save a, an exact duplicate, but it does save the deltas and changes. Um, but publishing pages and documents uh, can have tens or even hundreds of versions, and each one you know, might be 6K or 7K or 20K, and that quickly adds up when you're, when you're talking at each item within sites with, or within lists within sites, it just kind of uh, snowballs. So try to use that as a, as a, a good reminder to, to remove that version history that'll assist in other things down, down the line as you migrate. This is also a good time to remove unused or unwanted site collections or sites. If you have, say, a sandbox site or a training site where users have gone in and, and basically played and it's not been publicly accessible or accessible out to other departments, this would be a good, good time to, to go through and, and audit that and, and get that uh, cleaned up so that you don't have to clean it up later and it doesn't need to be transferred when you transfer to the new environment. A few more things to remember. Clean up. Uh, I've got two slides on this. It's a pretty big uh, deal. Remove uh, unused templates, features, and web parts. Again, if you're not using it, go ahead and get rid of it, and it'll make your life simpler and, or easier down the road. This is one that, that we run into, uh, removing closed web parts. If you have closed a web part on a page, it's not actually deleted from a page. And it's still living, still operating whenever a page is hit. It's still being called and using up uh, processing cycles and memory cycles. So you can run some PowerShell scripts to go through your site to remove these closed web parts. One, it'll help with performance. Uh, and two, it'll, again, it'll remove the, that reference and any possible um, failure for upgrading or for migrating to a new environment. On a, on a personal level, we've, uh, I'm, I'm working on a project right now of a migration where we have, uh, my, are migrating uh, a site and there were close to 1,400 closed web parts in the, in the uh, content database, in the, the web application, and the ones that were currently open on the site were just over 1,500, so almost 50% of the web parts that were referenced and being used within the site were closed. They were sitting there and no one could see them, but they were still using enough resources. So this is, uh, that, that has saved us tremendously on, on processing time and on performance in our new environment that we're moving to. The next step, um, empty recycle bins. That's again, you can do this uh, near the end after you've removed the closed web parts and you've deleted versions. Um, this will probably be one of the last things you'd want to do because um, by default when you delete something it goes into a recycle bin and just remember that there, there are two different layers of, of recycle bins. There's at the site and at the site collection level and an administrator will need to go in and clear those out. But that will uh, reduce the amount of size and amount of content that gets uh, moved over when you need to. And the last point on this to clean up is auditing data. And if you have auditing, auditing turned on and you're using it, um, just be aware that this can quickly and easily um, increase the size of your content database. We had a client that had turned it on un unbeknownst to them, and it was only on for a few weeks, but it took up quite a bit of data in their content database. And by going in and removing the auditing data that they didn't need and didn't even realize they were using, it reduced their content database uh, from 80 gigabytes down to under 10 gigabytes just in that one area. And there's one 
Um, there are PowerShell scripts um, that are out of the box with SharePoint 2010 that allow you to, to go through and re remove that auditing data safely. So just, just be aware of those. So cleanup is a, is a big thing. The next tip is to estimate how long it's going to take to actually um, when we're talking about moving content, moving uh, databases, to uh, just to, and this goes hand in hand with our next next tip, to know how long it's going to take, and and there are a couple of different areas we need to be able to estimate. Um, it might take only a few minutes to back up your database, but it could potentially take hours, multiple hours, to to transfer that database. If it's in, you know, the gigabytes, multiple gigabytes, you know, 20, 30 gigabytes, depending on the size. Um, so just be aware of that. Uh, how long that that would take. Test uh, testing your migration is is a um, it's a good way to to allow you to know if you're going to run into any issues, and it also will allow you to determine how long it will take to actually do a, a true migration. And, and some of those steps that I mentioned before, it will allow you to, to determine how long it's going to take to actually back up your content database, how long it will take to transfer that database to a new server, to restore it into the new SQL server, and then finally to import, attach. And I, I want to add here to upgrade. If you're going um, to a newer version of SharePoint, whether it's from 2007 to 2010, or to a, a cumulative update um, that's newer on the new environment, the process there will be some some processing time. So this this testing your migration step is key, and we've actually used uh, this with a few of our clients uh, going through and did an initial migration into a, a local test environment here in our office, and that that has given us an idea of how long all these steps have taken. And then we were able to <clears throat> to pick up on on issues where there may be missing web parts or there may be custom code that didn't that that was external to uh, being copied down from the content database and needed to be to be installed a new solution into the to the new farm. And this this gives you a a good baseline of when you do your true migration and and are going to do a, a go live type of migration then you can have a better handle on how long it's going to take and what, what issues you may run into. Um, your migration may not be you know, three clicks and you're done. There may be some manual steps you have to take in the middle to clean up or to, um, to remove unwanted web parts, et cetera. But going through this, this test uh, step will really give you a sense of, of what to expect and, and there won't be as many uh, gotcha moments. The next uh, tip is content blackout. And what, what do I mean by content blackout? For specifically for um, public facing sites or sites that are content uh, focused, you want to um, actually have a time where new content is not going to be added to the site. And one of the first things you would do is to set the original or the the current uh, site that you have, set the database to read only, so that content authors and editors aren't going in and and updating content that may not be uh, transferred over to the new system. So you're basically putting up a, a stop sign for uh, for content creation and editing, so that you don't have uh, duplication or you don't have loss of work, which is one of the step, one of the items here. Uh, there are uh, third-party tools really do minimize this, and, and this is um, with the three tools we mentioned a little bit later, one of them being uh, Acceler's uh, DaVinci Migrator, you can migrate kind of that phased approach, so it really minimizes your content blackout, whether you're moving uh, individual sites or an entire site collection, uh, the tool also gives you the, the opportunity to, to schedule uh, when those sites are migrated over or copied over to the new, uh, new environment. And that allows you to, to do it when you know, the traffic is, is the least amount on your site, whether it's 
um, first thing in the morning, lunchtime, depending on the size, um, it allows you to to manage that a little bit better. And the content blackout, the, to be aware that by doing, by setting a blackout period, um, you have to keep in mind either if you don't do the content blackout, you may lose work. If someone goes into the old system, into the one that's being migrated from, and adds content or updates content, that will not be transferred over with the content database to the new environment. Um, on the flip side, if you do do a content blackout, there will be possibility for a duplication of content. If you really want to allow the content to be up, if you're going to have to have a content blackout, say for um, a week or more, then the content authors and editors will have to be aware of that, and you have to plan for that that duplication so that once the new content, new website comes up in the new environment, that same content will have to be entered manually on, onto that side. And we've we've had run into that um, with most of our clients, and what we try to do if we're doing an all or all at once type of uh, approach that they'll stop publishing their content on, on a, say, a Friday, and we'll put the blackout period in, set the database to read only, and move the database and do the configuration over the, the weekend, and then have the site up and running first thing Monday so that the content authors are impacted very little, if at all. And again, that depends on your business and depends on how content is created. Um, if that's a Monday through Friday type thing, or if there's a lot of content created over the weekend, you may want to do it at a slower time during the week. So tip number nine, uh, talking about migrating users. And there's two different types. There's classic mode to claims in SharePoint 2010 adds in uh, the claims of, of, a, of users. And that mode you have to be aware that um, classic mode, if you're doing a, say, a forms-based authentication, um, is going to change when you go to 2010. So you'll need to prepare, uh, whether it's PowerShell scripts or have someone develop some type of console application that will need to go through and change those users from the old uh, provider uh, format to the new claims provider. The the second bullet, you know, if you're going from claims to claims, even if you're still going from a SharePoint 2010 to a SharePoint 2010 environment, if the domains are different, then you will need to migrate the users that are uh, Active Directory users, and that migration will also need to happen so that the groups and security and, and ownership of different parts of your site will won't be affected, and a uh, user won't be won't lose. Um, what they've done or won't lose their, their access to the, the sites that they need. And this kind of goes back to a previous step of testing. Um, make sure that you prepare these scripts and test them out ahead of time so that when you get to the end of your migration, this is one of the last steps, then make sure that, your, um, that the scripts are, are ready to go and you'll know how long they take. If you have 5,000 users, you know that this script might take, say, 10 minutes. If you have 20,000 users, this could be you know, an hour or multiple hours. So just to, just to be aware of, of preparation for that. And then I've mentioned a few times some third-party tools. Uh, the, the three I want to kind of uh, highlight, um, Exceller's DaVinci Migrator. Uh, Idera has one that's called Migration Manager. And AvPoint has their Doc Av SharePoint migrator, and um, not third-party tools aren't the be-all end-all. They 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 do allow you to to help um, with the migration, but you still have to be able to to know what you're migrating and know your environment that you're moving from and to. It does allow you to manage risk. It does allow you to 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 move that that business impact up higher up in the chain so that you don't have to have someone down in the weeds um, running PowerShell scripts or doing different things. Third-party tools allow you to, to manage that, that downtime and to minimize it so that you can, can split up your content migration. You can do it, again, at the site level or at the, at the list level. And it just, um, the last 
part with the third-party tools, it helps to minimize some of the issues you might run into. The, with like a, the screenshot we had before of the DaVinci Migrator, you can actually go out and query and see uh, where in your content, where in your, your current site, you may have issues so that you can be prepared for them or take care of them before you try to do a migration. So the slide deck that we have that will be available, here are some of the resources, uh, some links. Um, there's, most of them are TechNet. The, the first one there, uh, the test SB content database from uh, SharePoint Joel, that's a, a good, <clears throat> a good reference to be able to, to know more about what the, the test script and that uh, pre-upgrade check script does. And then our second uh, set is links directly to the, the three third-party tools that we mentioned. So with that, uh, time to open it up for questions. Uh, yeah, Justin, there's, there's uh, a question. Are the third-party migration tools expensive? Um, and I think they kind of range in price, don't they, from, um, you know, a uh, couple thousand dollars up to, you know, tens of thousands of dollars. I guess it depends on what you're looking for specifically. Right, and, and with some of them, it depends on, I guess you have to weigh the cost of, is this going to be something I use one time or is this something I'm going to be able to use if I have a big enough site or multiple sites to be able to um, reuse uh, over the course of you know months or years. And I know with some of the third-party tools, it a lot of the, the cost may also depend on what options you get. Um, some of them, like the, the DaVinci Migrator, is a, has three main features in it, but it's all packaged together. I know that AvPoint, with their, with their doc Av, they have lots of different um, products and, and you can um, can add on and that that can save you uh, in terms of cost and, and allow you to, to use some of their other their tools that kind of plug in no that, that's a good point and the and I think the other thing is and this might be the way idea does it if I remember correctly is um, based on how much content you're looking at migrating um, True. The more, the and, more content and the size of the, the content database and the size of the materials you're moving affect the price. And also your environment. If you have how many web front ends and how many, you know, your, your server farm environment affects that licensing too. Oh, exactly. Uh, just another question. Are the PowerShell scripts you referenced out of the box? There are some of the PowerShell scripts. The test SB content database um, is actually a commandlet that is installed with SharePoint 2010. There are some others. Um, if you the like for migrating users, there is a migrate user uh, STS ADM command. But then you can also through now with SharePoint 2010, you can do PowerShell scripts, custom PowerShell scripts, and there's lots of references. Um, out on, on the on the web for how to migrate users if you need to do some some different things that, that the migrate user script doesn't do right out of the box. A few of the other PowerShell scripts, uh, if we're talking about like cleaning up content or deleting closed web parts or doing like version history cleanup, those are all going to be using commandlets or using the SharePoint API through a custom uh, PowerShell. Great. Um, looking through the other questions here, Justin. Um, what have you seen in terms of um, the duration of, of migrations? I mean, I guess that, I mean there's so many factors um, that play in in terms of your approach, um, whether it's um, you're doing it all at once or you're doing a phased approach. Um, how much content there is, and how much cleanup there has to be after after the migration. But you know, from if you if you follow all the steps in here uh, that you kind of outlined, and you reduce your content database size, and you do a lot of cleanup ahead of time, you know, what do you what do you typically see from a blackout period? A blackout period, and the, again, this is you know, there's a couple of factors, but we've had uh, just uh, 
we're in the process of a, a project right now, just in the last week or two, where we've cleaned up the content database, been able to do a backup, and I got the database was I think around nine or ten gigs, and then transferred that to up to the production environment, and got it set up and running, and that was all probably within a matter of I'd say six to eight hours total, and that was you know including everything from backing up the database, transferring it, restoring it, and then getting uh, getting some of the custom solutions that we had installed and configured. Um, but that was that was kind of the second phase or second round of doing that. When we did that originally, we were able to 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 figure out and get that baseline of how long it would take. So that was that's one example. We have another project that we worked on back in the summer that was a little bit longer, but that was mostly because there was a lot more custom code and there was a lot more of design type of implementation that needed to happen after the, the content was brought up in the new environment. Right. Um, does migrating from on-premise to a hosted solution typically add extra time? Oh, that's a great question. No, it does not. Um, standing up a, a temporary environment for either uh, the development or testing of the migration uh, is quick and easy and then also moving that to a production environment um, does not take much time at all. So um, moving from on-premise to a hosted environment uh, can be quick uh, and easy and it also should be always considered when, when migrating from an older version of SharePoint to 2010. And I would just add that I think the, the biggest time factor, um, and it's, it just it depends on going from environment to environment, is going to be how long it takes to actually move that, that content database. So going from on-premise to, to hosted is, you know, depends on the, the speed of your network. Yep. 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 Absolutely. Right. Yeah. Thanks, Bill. Yeah. I mean, I think the, the, the kind of wrap up, I think we're, I think those are the extent of the questions. Um, is you know the, the the key to content migration um, and or you know just to migration in general is there's and Justin you did a really good job of outlining um, a, a lot of the things you got to watch for is um, it, it's it's not complex um, but you kind of have to do every step and look at optimizing every step so that when you get to the end and you're actually doing it whether you're doing it phase or doing it all at once. That you know you've you, you've done your due diligence and planning and cleanup and optimization and everything so that the actual moment of migration goes as quickly and as smoothly as possible because um, it's not it's not complex it's just a matter of you have to make sure you you know dot the i's across the t's right yeah it's putting all of your pieces together in the right order and in the right um, context. Right, because and I've seen it. I think we've all learned this. You know, years ago is when, when you go to do it and you haven't optimized, you haven't cleaned up, and but you've done all your planning and you go in and you okay, you, you know, you right click on your your database and you start to make the backup and then you see the the bar and it says it's going to take you know, four and a half hours and then you have to copy that across the wire or figure out how you're going to get it to the new location and then to restore it. So the the you know getting that content database to a good size to a good size just makes everything a lot easier. Yep, exactly. Okay, well if there's no other questions, um, I'd like to thank everybody for attending um, part two of uh, our migration uh, webinar, and look for an email um, from us with a link to the PowerPoint as well as a link to the recorded video if you want to reference it after the fact. And uh, Bill and Justin, I appreciate you guys leading it today, and uh, I'll talk to everybody soon. Great. Thanks, everybody. Yes, thanks. Have a great day.